Here's the putter, Rigoberto Sanchez on to get us started. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. Oh, a good return up past the 30. Under center for the Vikings, out comes the former Michigan State Spartan and longtime veteran Kirk Cousins. And one nice thing you can always say about Kirk Cousins is that he's consistent. Always puts up nice numbers each and every year. If there is a downside to his game, it's been the lack of playoff success. All in all, the formidable starting quarterback at a time in the league where it's tough to find your franchise guy. Cousins looking to put it up right away. And right off the bat, look at him lay out there and make the grab. 13 yards on the game's opening play. Well, how about that adrenaline? First play of the game, and we have a catch that we're going to talk about probably the rest of this game and straight into the highlights. Right out of the gate. What an effort. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. On play action, Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. And he's going to be a yard short. The two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. They're going for it. Here's Madison. A solid pickup of five and a very solid fourth down conversion and defensively pure frustration. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They go play action. Cousins. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. It's a game of 11 as the Vikings pick up the first. We got to like what you're seeing from this offense here on the first drive. A nice sustained series to begin the game. It will continue after picking up another first there. Would you say the word methodical comes to mind? I love the execution. I love what they're doing on this drive. They're controlling the ball. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. It'll only be a loss of a couple, but the pressure gets home on first down. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Second down, Cousins. That's caught by the big tight end, T.J. Hawkinson. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward. Incomplete pass. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. I think we got to give it up for him right there. That's a heck of an athletic move for a big man right in the middle of the line. How about the play he makes there? Nowhere to run, and he finishes that one off for a loss. Play action now. Cousins. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. Joseph's got it, and the Vikings have a 3 0 lead. Well, after marching down the field, only getting three there, kind of feels like a win for the defense. And it does. They'll go to the sideline feeling a lot better that they didn't give up a touchdown after the march against them. But if I were the offense, I wouldn't hang my head over that one. That's a good drive, and three points were put on the board. And bulldozing his way through. And he'll be out of bounds here just past the 20-yard line. It didn't take long to see our first penalty of the game, did it? We always talk about everyone wanting to get into the game in a hurry. The officials did as well. Throwing on first down is Minshew. This one completes Alec Pierce. And he almost gets this to the 30, taken down about a yard shy.
Here's the former NFL rushing champ. It's Jonathan Taylor. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Again, it's Taylor. And he stopped immediately there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for him. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big-bodied guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Well, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. Following the interception, Cousins. This is caught by Addison. And he gets it all the way down inside the ten and mark him at the five. Here's Madison running on first down. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Second quarter now from Minnesota. It's the Vikings in possession of the football. As they come up now, second and goal. Here's Cousins. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he goes backwards on this one. Losing yardage to the seven. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And now what we have here, a third and goal. Now Cousins. Forced out to his left. Now throw on the run, but that's going to be incomplete. The Colts D sticking to their assignments, and that brings up fourth. Fourth down, field goal try coming, so Cousins is off, and on comes Greg Joseph from Minnesota. The kick by Joseph is good, and they're able to double their lead in this first half. It's six to nothing. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. And they'll get him down inside the 30 to 27. Second drive coming up here for the Indianapolis Colts. They find themselves down here after an interception on their opening drive led to a field goal. But all in all, you'd have to say fortunate to be only down six. Yeah, you know how teams huddle on the sideline before they come out on the field in between series? Guarantee what's said there is, guess what, guys? We take this ball, move it downfield, put it in the end zone, we're right back to even. Out of the gun is Minshew. Finds his big tight end, Mo Alley Cox. And they're able to get this one across the 35. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. To the right side, this is Taylor. And some nifty running here as he'll take this across midfield and down to the 47. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10 as they've got things rolling on this drive. They go to the ground again with Taylor. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. It went right back to him, but he pretty much had nowhere to go on that play. Yeah, the previous carry looked pretty good. That one, maybe he was a little tired. I don't know. Yeah, maybe he should have tapped out and had a second back come in and maybe make that run. Who knows? And then she would nowhere to go, and they take him to the ground. Give that sack to Harrison Phillips, the big man. How to approach this. Third down and 16 yards to go. Looking to throw it, Minshew. That ball nearly intercepted, but he could not hold on. Oh, a pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least 
least it'll be fourth down. On fourth down, the Colts will call on Rigoberto Sanchez for the punt. Brandon Powell deep for Minnesota. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. The Vikings ready to go again on offense. And their two drives thus far both led to points, albeit both field goals, so the lead just six to nothing. But the ability to move the ball is evident. Well, that's, you know, heartening, as they say, but it's not what they're about. What they're about is putting the ball in the end zone and putting sixes on the board. So if you're the offensive coordinator, you like what you're doing, but you don't love it. You've got to find a way to ring that bell. Then you can have a little self-satisfied grin. Right now, a little more determination is needed. Throwing. Cousins. Eight yards that time. Able to take off, and the result is a first down. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to report. Give the, need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A good pickup there, 21 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. He'll take this to the 46. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he's trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Here's second and seven. They'll run out of the gun with Akers. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. Well, this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Feeling like they're not quite in field goal range yet. They're going to go for it on four. They'll try and run for it. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. The Vikings going to signal for the first to their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. They'll run on first down with Akers. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Two yards to go, second down. They'll try to throw now, Cousins. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it. And they do so and pick up a first down. A kicker fest so far, all points via field goals. They're hoping to change that right here. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. Joseph's got it, and that will do it for this first half.
So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. All Final right, adjustments Coach, being made Fine in the locker room. Always, we're just we about ready for the second half for from Minneapolis. Three. And for the call, let's rejoin Brandon and Charles. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, called it the 26. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack. And well, he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Michael Pittman. 74 yards. And the Colts come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is down to two. Sanchez now. He'll kick it away following the touchdown. And that one bounces out of the back of the end zone. So we'll start the drive at the 25 on the touchback. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. And maybe some renewed pressure on this unit following the touchdown a moment ago. It's back to a one-score game. And because of that pressure, because it's now a one-score game, they know this is where you need to slow the momentum change because otherwise that could overrun your team. You've got to be careful right here. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. Off the play fake, Cousins. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. The catch and run pays off for 29 yards. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 46. Down to the 42, second down. Oftentimes we praise an offense for their variety of being able to hit people with the run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Play fake. Cousins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. So it looks like the offense isn't going anywhere. They're going to go for it on fourth and seven. Throwing his cousins. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Vikings unable to convert here on fourth. And the Colts are going to take over with a football. The Colts come to the line ready to start their next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. So over the middle, and there's a diving catch. Call that a very strong gain of 24. When I played in the yard as a kid, I used to imitate the spectacular catches that I would see on TV. I don't think I ever imitated one quite that well. <laughs> Come on, give yourself some credit. No, I know better. What we just saw there, that was pretty special. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. So they elect to decline it. And why not? Just go ahead and let the play stand, and they'll take that. Now Minshew on first and 10. He'll drop this down to Taylor. He's dropped just inside the 20. A little second effort there, but couldn't find a whole lot of space. Now a second and six. 
Minshew sets to throw. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. On first and goal, they'll try the option left. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. Moved back to the 10. They'll try on second and goal here. From the gun, Minshew to throw. And this will be swung out wide for Taylor. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the completion, but they'll still be faced now with a third and goal situation. Here's Minshew. And that is caught. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Mo Alley Cox from three yards out. And the Colts have scored again in this third quarter, this time to move out in front. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And the lead is up to five. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And last time they were stopped on fourth down, had a drive stalled out. We'll see how they respond this go around. I'm eager to see what their mindset is because moving the ball, feeling good, and then that abrupt stop on fourth down, do they go back to the bench and go, oh, boy, they've got something for us? Or do they go to the bench and say, we blew it ourselves. Let's get back out there and move the ball again. And is it different when you get stopped on fourth versus punt? Is that more motivation for the defense, a little more confidence? I think as a defense, you're so excited with a fourth down stop. Making them punt, that's your goal anyway. But a fourth down stop, that's almost a sign of disrespect that they went for it in the first place. And when you get that, you feel great about yourselves. On third down, Cousins. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. Good work there to force the incompletion and fourth down. Normally, it'd be a quick change for the punt return unit, but this offense has converted twice on fourth down so far, so... You may want to double-check things there and make sure they're actually going to kick the football. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Fourth down conversion plays, you usually think one, two, three yards, maybe ten. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward. Cousins throw taken in by Hawkinson here. And he's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch it. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. From the 34-yard line here, second and six. On play action, Cousins. Completes this to Addison out left. And they'll get him to the ground, and he has another first down at the Colts 14. They'll go Madison up the middle. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. Out to his left. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Cousins taking it in from a yard out. And the Vikings answer back with a touchdown of their own to take a fourth quarter lead. But plenty of scoring here of late, and our lead changes hands now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they just gave up a touchdown on the other end, so they knew that with time getting short, they had to put something together here. And they were able to do so and retake the lead right back. So now here are the Vikings faced with a big two-point conversion attempt. It's a run with Akers. And he'll get into the end zone. So now a field goal would only tie as they pop their lead to three. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll be out of bounds across the 25. 
The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And they will be looking to answer the touchdown their defense just surrendered. Still a good chunk of time remaining here in the fourth quarter and a chance to regain the lead in a tight one. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being there. And he'll push forward for a couple to the 34. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. First and 10, Taylor now. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. So their task a little bit more difficult now. Second and 13 that they're walking up on. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment defense. Penalty accepted, and they move the ball forward. So the penalty erases their earlier loss. Now it's second and eight. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. That's going to be taken in by Downs. Touchdown, Indianapolis. Josh Downs, 50 yards. And the Colts use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. Extra point by Gay is up and good. And that will make this a four-point game. Sanchez now, he'll kick it away following the touchdown. And that'll be a little too hot to handle as it will skip through the end zone for a touchback here. And now out comes Minnesota. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. As soon as I saw him break contain and get outside, my first thought and my eyes gravitated downfield because nowadays most of these quarterbacks, when they do that, they want the big play downfield. They don't want to throw it short. In this case, he took the shot. It fell incomplete. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after their last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. And the comeback may stall out. It's intercepted. Picked off by... 